Okay, so if you understand similar triangles in geometry, well, then you should be able to figure this problem out. But uh, even if you don't know what similar triangles are, you still may be able to kind of reason through and logically figure out the answer to this problem. Okay, so we have a small triangle, and by the way, these are right triangles inside of a bigger right triangle. And what we're trying to do here is find this length x. But uh, we do have some information here. The base of the big triangle is 10. And then right here, the height of the small triangle is 6. And then this uh, size right here, or this length, is 6 as well. All right, now feel free to use a calculator. But uh, if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. And of course, I'm going to explain similar triangles and some very important things that you need to understand about triangles and geometry. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The correct uh, solution here is x is equal to 5. Now, if you got this right, will you definitely get a happy face and an A plus? You'd be like, oh, Mr. You Too Math Man, I don't even know what the word similar means. Well, this is actually not that difficult, but it is a very important word in geometry. All right, so let's see how to solve this problem. And uh, let, again, this problem, to solve this problem, we're going to have to know something about similar triangles. So what is a similar triangle? Well, I'm going to show you that in a second. And this is the first thing we need to know that, hey, we're dealing with similar triangles. The second thing is that we need to understand this specific theorem, the AA theorem. Okay, now there's probably other ways we can approach this. I'm going to use this uh, theorem here. AA stands for Angle Angle Theorem. Now, when you study geometry, especially like at the high school level, you learn a ton of theorems and postulates. And if you were ever uh, wondering or if you kind of like, oh, yeah, I remember postulates and theorems and probably heard the word before. Um, so what's the difference between a postulate and a theorem? Well, let me just tell you very, very quickly in a very informal way. A postulate, okay, is something that we kind of... Um, uh, except on faith. Now, you might be uh, surprised that much of mathematics is based upon uh, faith, okay? In other words, it's almost a philosophical type of uh, discipline where we, uh, some of you might uh, think, oh, you know, math is so concrete, you know, because one plus one is equal to two. If there's absolute, you know, proof in the universe, mathematics, well, no. Uh, the thing with math is we have to uh, develop uh, kind of a system of mathematics and uh, the kind of those basic basic concepts uh, or properties if you will are called like axioms and I don't want to go off on too many tangents here but I am axioms and in geometry a lot of those things are called postulates so these are uh, basically rules or things that we accept um, on faith okay that we cannot prove effectively now a theorem is something we can prove okay so theorems can be proved by using other things like namely postulates and other things in mathematics so that's the difference because you will definitely run across these two words postulates and uh, theorems and axioms okay but just remember and hopefully this doesn't shock you or make you sad in any way that you know math you know is not so 100 percent absolute um anyways i'll tell you one other quick thing about mathematics as well especially in geometry we have euclidean uh, uh geometry euclid okay euclidean geometry and then we have like non-euclidean geometry so basically uh uh euclid was one of the most awesome mathematicians there ever was. And he was, you know, like a founding uh, father, if you will, of a lot of the concepts in geometry. But Euclidean geometry is like uh, geometry like on planet Earth. And then when you go to outer space and we take into other considerations like gravity, it gets crazy with non-Euclidean geometry. But, you know, uh, I don't want to go off on too many tangents here because I have to stop myself. But what I want to tell you is that you know, math is a big, big universe, and not everything is as uh, it appears, okay, in terms of absolutes. All right, but anyways, right here we have similar triangles. Now, if you notice our little uh, figure, we have a triangle right here. Uh, there's one triangle, and then we have this other bigger triangle, and these two triangles are similar triangles. So what is a similar triangle? Well, we need to understand that, and then we need to understand this angle-angle theorem. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about similarity. 
All right, so we're talking about similar triangles, but similarity can apply to any figure. And I love similarity because uh, basically I think of it as the zoom in or zoom out property. Okay, so let's suppose I have this lovely triangle right here and I zoom out and I can make a copy of it and here it is. Okay, so here is my kind of bigger copy of this little small triangle. Or I could think of it this way. I have this big old triangle and I'm gonna zoom uh, in and I wanna make myself a, a smaller copy of that triangle. Either way, these are basically the, uh, the same triangle. The only difference is they have a uh, different, they're different size, okay? Well, this is the concept of similarity and it doesn't, it could be anything. It could be a uh, other uh, figures, you know, that we can zoom in or zoom out. So it's not, st not just triangles. But in geometry, the notation for similarity is this uh, little squiggly thing right here, okay? And that's not to be confused with congruency, okay? Which is a totally different deal. Uh, congruent figures have the exact same uh, shape and size, okay? So in uh, similar figures, they have uh, the same shape, but not the same size. Okay, so that is what a similar uh, figure is. And of course, we're talking about similar triangles. Now, here is the big, big thing that we need for this particular um, problem is that when you have similar figures, okay, uh, you can compare any two sides, okay, and those uh, sides will be in proportion to one another, okay? And this is going to be the key to doing this problem. We're going to set up a proportion. So if I compare this side to this side, okay, that is going to be in proportion to this side to this side, okay? So uh, uh, corresponding sides are in proportion when it comes to similar figures. Now, I don't want to turn this into a complete full geometry course and geometry lesson, although I've kind of already went off on too many crazy tangents, but hopefully you're still with me. Like, you know, I find it kind of interesting, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, you know, uh, but listen, uh, again, a lot to uh, try to teach in a small period of time, but hopefully you understand what similar figures are and similar triangles are. And the key, again, is that we could set up a proportion to um, uh, solve similar figure problems. And that's what we're going to be doing uh, next. Before we continue with the video, please take a quick second to help me out. So what I need you to do is to hit that subscribe button. This really does help my content reach as many people as possible on YouTube. And if you're going to do that, make sure to hit that bell notification as well so you know when my latest videos are posted. All right, so let's go ahead and get back to the video. All right, so here is our problem, okay? So the first thing we need to understand is that we're dealing with similar triangles. We're dealing with similar figures. So as I indicated, we have a triangle here and we have a triangle here. But what makes uh, two triangles similar? Well, there's different theorems, okay, that we can use. But effectively, remember, uh, a, a similar figures or similar triangles um, have the same shape but different sizes. So if they have the same angles, okay, then the, i.e. they have the same uh, shape, okay? So we can kind of establish that uh, these two triangles right here have the same angles, okay? Then we can kind of conclude that they are similar triangles, and then we can uh, find uh, what this value is x by using or setting up a proportion, okay? All right. So let's go ahead and talk about this AA theorem. And that basically uh, states that if two angles of a triangle are the same, then the, uh, uh, the triangles are similar. So let's focus in on the small triangle right here. And let's uh, notice we have a right triangle and we have this angle, right? This angle is part of this small triangle. Okay, so it's uh, 90 degrees here and whatever this angle is, that's the angle. Now, let's go ahead and keep this angle in focus right here and use that angle as part of the big ang uh, triangle, right? But we also have another 90 degrees down here, okay, in the bigger triangle with the same angle. So you can see that both of these uh, triangles are sharing the same angle, right? This angle up on top is the same for both the bigger and the smaller triangle. So this is the same angle and they're both right angles, 90 degrees. Therefore, okay, this angle right here is the same. Okay, so 
these uh, triangles have the exact same angles. Uh, that means that they have the uh, exact same shape, i.e. they are similar. All right, so we're very happy to know that. Again, we can uh, prove that by using the angle, uh, angle, angle uh, theorem. Now, by the way, uh, some of you that uh, re may remember back in high school level geometry, you actually have to prove stuff. That's a big thing in mathematics. That's all I did when I was uh, studying theoretical mathematics is uh, the concept of proof. So oftentimes you'll, you'll see problems prove these two triangles are similar and then you'll have to walk through that. That's a whole nother kind of deal. If you're interested in that level of geometry, I'll leave links to my full geometry course uh, in the description as well. Uh, that really kind of gets into more heavy duty geometry. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and finish this problem up. So these are uh, similar triangles. In other words, we could make a comparison to the sides. Now there's different ways we can do this, but let's uh, kind of do it this way. This side, okay, this length, if I take that length and I divide it by this length, it's the same or equal to me taking this length and dividing it by this length. And what, uh, what I want to do is set up a proportion here so I can solve for x. So I'm going to say 6 is 2x, and that's going to be equal to as 12 is to 10. All right, so let's go ahead and set this up right now. So we're just going to make a comparison of the same side. So I'm going to take this side divided by this side. And whatever that answer is, it's going to be equal to this side divided by this side, this side. And this is what we call a proportion in uh, mathematics, two equal fractions, and we use algebra and proportions to solve a ton of geometry problems. Okay, so right now, if you understand the setup, the algebra is gonna be very easy. So to solve a proportion, all we need to do is use the cross product. Remember, a proportion is two equal fractions. If I have the fraction one half is equal to four over eight, those fractions are equal, okay? Well, if you notice here, if I go uh, crosswise, I have a multiply crosswise, i.e. the cross product, 1 times 8 is 8, and 2 times 4 is 8. Therefore, the cross product is equal. So I'm saying, hey, I got one fraction equal to another, another fraction. Let's go ahead and apply the cross product. So I have uh, 12 times x, which of course would be 12x, and 6 times 10, which of course would be 60. And to solve for x, all I have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 12. 60 divided by 12 is 5. x is equal to 5. So I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in geometry, check out these courses right here. So in my pre-algebra course, I have a couple of chapters on basic geometry. But uh, if you have to understand all things geometry to include uh, proofs, then you got to check out my full geometry course. Now, if you want a good math review of basic math, algebra, and geometry, then check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. All right, so I'm going to leave links to all these courses in the description of this video. And with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.